So good evening, everyone. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. The, I just want to let you know that this meeting is going to be recorded. Um, so my name is Marty Walsh, and I'm the Empowerment Coordinator with American Promise. And I'll let Marie and Vicki introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Marie Henselder Kimmel. I'm um, with American Promise, New Jersey, from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I'm Vicki Barnes from um, Minnesota, the chapter leader here. Actually there, I'm in Wisconsin for this meeting. <laughs> World traveler. Okay, so this call this evening is beginning elected officials to act team meeting, which is also meeting with the elected officials. Um, and perfect, sorry. Um, the purpose of this first training session of getting elected officials to act team is to discuss how our lobby days went and how to best follow up with the offices we met with. However, the ongoing purpose of this team is to train us how to hold effective meetings with our elected officials at every letter and how to get them to act in supportive ways to advance our amendment. And Vicki, Marie, Nancy, Barbara, Heather, they're all pros. So you will hear great information from them. Okay, so we will meet each month to support each other and having breakthroughs in moving our elected officials up the champion scale from opposed, neutral, or supporter, all the way up to advocate, leader, and eventually champion. Marie Hensilver Kimmel and Vicki Barnes are co-leading the Getting Elected Officials to Act team. Thank you, Marie and Vicki. Tonight's session is one in a series of five trainings and ongoing teams of support. I'll describe the other trainings, but I wanna make it clear that we're not just talking about a one-time training and then goodbye, but starting with a training, then having a team of folks who will meet once a month led by a trained volunteer to support each other in taking action in that area. The friend baking team includes topics like writing and telling your story of self, learning the laser talk, friend banking, and other forms of personal outreach. They meet monthly on the third Thursday of the month and make phone calls and texts to their contacts and share a bit about the efforts while trying to build our movement. And I recently, recently just added, the Zoom link should be on the AP calendar as well for all of these calls that I'm describing. So another training and ongoing team is on writing letters to the editor and having them published and other media work. Ann Drum, North Texas chapter leader, is co-leading the writing letters to the editor team. Thank you, Ann. We're looking for another volunteer to join Ann in being trained by Sam Daly Harris to co-lead the letters to the editor team. This team meets monthly on the fourth Tuesday of the month. The recording from the April 28th training went over sending out press releases after your lobby day meetings. You can find that recording here and I'll put that in the chat. I got fourth Tuesday. Hey, hey Marnie, repeat that. Fourth Tuesday? Four, fourth Thursday. Fourth Thursday. Yep, and the Empowerment Monthly was also sent out this evening with the Zoom links to register for the calls and it should be updated on the AP calendar. So another training and ongoing team will focus on planning and hosting events with or without other organizations partnering with you. Their training will be at 7.30 p.m. Eastern or 4.30 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday, May 26th. Laura Nittmeyer and Andrum will co-lead the planning and hosting events team. Thank you, Laura and Ann. This upcoming event training will feature town halls and panel discussions in collaboration with your elected official. Another training and ongoing team will focus on the use of social media. Monica Rodriguez will co-lead the social media team. Thank you, Monica. We're looking for another volunteer to co-lead the social media team with Monica. The social media training is Wednesday, June 23rd at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time slash 4.30 p.m. Pacific. If you're interested in, in co-leading any of these groups, email me at marniew at americanpromise.net. 
So next we're gonna do have a quote of inspiration. So often the relationship between an advocacy organization and their volunteers is transsectional. Here's a petition to sign, signature affixed, transaction complete. But in this model, there is not much growth for the volunteers. And without growth, their engagement and excitement can be slight and fleeting. A much more powerful relationship between an organization and its volunteers is one of transformation where the volunteers see themselves in a new light. They see themselves in ways they never imagined possible as community leaders. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Often the relationship between an advocacy organization and their volunteers is translational. Here's a petition to sign, signature affix, transaction complete. But in this model, there is not much growth for the volunteers. And without growth, their engagement and excitement can be slight and fleeting. A much more powerful relationship between an organization and its volunteers is one of transformation where the volunteers see themselves in a new light. They see themselves in ways they never imagined possible as community leaders. That's what we're seeing with these congressional meetings and this work with American Promise. We're seeing ourselves in a new light. We're seeing ourselves as community leaders. Congratulations. Thanks, and I'll pass Marie. it over to Marie. Thanks, Marnie. Um, so to try to help organize, because there, you know, was a lot. There've been a lot of there's been a lot of back and forth among the network of wow, this happened with my meetings, or what happened with your meetings, or I'm not sure to what, what to do next about such and such. And um, I knew that that was happening. So yesterday, when we were talking about putting on this training, we uh, decided to put out a, a survey, a very brief survey, to try to collect some feedback on what what the thoughts were, what the challenges were. So um, it was last minute, but we did get 10 replies from eight different states, which I think is pretty good. Um, the successes included a lot of firsts, and this really addresses what Marnie just said. We had people who scheduled their first meeting, people who moderated a meeting for the first time, people who completed a meeting for the first time with their member of Congress, um, and those are those are big successes. You have to start someplace, and to get that first step of "Wow, I got that done. That that went great." That's a, that's a big empowering empowering um, point to move on to the next thing. There were five successes also mentioned out of the ten that involved cordial meetings with Republicans, and one who mentioned that she managed to overcome her own feelings about the member of Congress to be cordial. And that is a good step too. That's a success, that's a success because we have to be, um, we have to approach these relationships in a way that we want to, we want to start a relationship and you can't start a relationship. You know, what, what's the saying? You, you attract more flies with honey than vinegar. So you have to walk in the door with a smile on your face and, and be amiable and, and be open to starting a relationship. Um, so I think that's really important. And Nancy um, had an interesting success in, um, in starting to empower her Virginia volunteers. And I wanted to invite Nancy to share with us um, what, she, what she found successful. Sure, and thanks Marie and Vicki and Sam and everybody. Just to give you a context of Virginia, uh, American Promise started in 2016. I think there were one of two, I didn't attend in 2016, I attended in 2018. At that time, I think we had three, four members uh, meetings and it was basically, I'm with results. So Sam, thank goodness for results because they had all the legislative contacts and stuff like that and we set them up. 2019, we had five. Two, this time we had eight meetings. Uh, two with two our two senators Kane and Warner and then six Democrats and just to give you a context we have seven we have 11 representatives seven Democrats and last time last session we got all seven Democrats to sign uh, HDR2 
and we got all, both senators. So that was a success. But I think the success that really made me feel good was that we've been growing our group. And even though it was, I must say, it was sort of short, short notice, we should have started planning early. But we had, so we had eight meetings, two senates and six uh, democratic uh, representatives. And out of that, I was so excited because I, five of the, I got five new members to chair the meetings and to facilitate the meetings. And I got, uh, you know, people were giving their own stories. I think that we, look, we can learn from Vicki, you know, I think we could have done it better in terms of looking at results when results does meetings, they're seamless, you know, but I think just because this was virtual, we didn't really have any time like usually we'd normally have with Sam, you know, doing meeting people in the in the conference and going over the process and setting up roles and stuff like that. I, we were sort of scrambling, but I think it was it was remarkable. Um, you know, it, and the wonderful thing about having having constituents who didn't actually they didn't attend the conference, they didn't register for the conference, but they were members. But because they were constituents, they brought in two or three people that they knew who cared about the issue. So all of a sudden it was like, it's like the snowball effect. And, and, and so I, I thought that was really exciting. It wasn't seamless. Um, you know, a couple of people wrote up their stories. Uh, I think that everybody felt like, oh my goodness, you know, we, we all had a role and we all had, 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 had power in this process. I think the challenge now for American Promise is that having these Zoom meetings is really powerful and it, and it opens up the door to having a lot more constituents participate. So when this COVID thing is, comes around, it's great to get together in Virginia, in, in, you know, in Washington to get together. But in a fact, we, I think there needs to be a hybrid approach where we're going and visiting in person, but same time, time allowing some type of Zoom conference for people who can't come to, to participate. So I thought it was really empowering. I was really proud of everybody. You know, we could have practiced more. I think Marie and all you guys were having all these practices. We were, we were sort of scrambling, but we did a good job and everybody felt empowered. So I thought it was a great process. Good, that's great. I mean, that's important to bring, to have, um, to have uh, your members take on new roles and um, I uh, actually St Steve and um, Steve and Barb took on some new roles there in my uh, my chapter, my local chapter, Tri-County chapter. And um, uh, Heather uh, actually shared a success that she, uh, she's also from New Jersey and shared a success that she uh, moderated her first meeting and, um, and you know, did some of the roles her, that she had not done before. And, and th those things are powerful because it proves to you, you can do it. Um, so that's great. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, so I also wanted to share from the um, survey that there were um, some challenges that came up in several of the answers. Four said that it was a challenge that there were so many moving parts. Um, the multiple meetings being coordinated, uh, bringing volunteers together, quite a few, I think quite a few of the leaders felt that, hey, this is all virtual, so it's going to be easy. We're going to have so many people that are going to want to participate in these Zoom lobby meetings because they don't have to go to Washington. Well, in a lot of ways, it was actually more difficult because people weren't stepping away from their daily lives and going to a conference to go and lobby. They had to fit it around their childcare and their work and you know they weren't necessarily there during the day so they weren't really necessarily off work if they worked so in a lot of ways um one of the one of the one person and actually might have been you that uh, uh nancy somebody said they had to beg people <laughs> to attend lobby meetings um but it, but apparently you know it worked it got they got people to actually participate so that was a challenge for many many people um and several people mentioned a challenge of getting, um, getting a staffer of a Congress person who was opposed to the idea of an amendment to actually stay on target to the issue. And I think from, they didn't give more specifics than that, but I think from what I heard from a few people was that the, the staffer, often the staffers 
were sort of diverting over to, well, that HR1, we're against that. And this is, no, 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 we're not talking about HR1. We're talking about House Joint Resolution 1. And um, this is the amendment. We're talking about amendment language. And that was a that was something that um, was suggested to me and I had shared with other leaders. Uh, Jim Rubinson said, just right off in your introduction at the, at the outset, don't, we've seen this in a couple of meetings, just set right off the bat, if you're meeting with a Republican office where you know that they, you know, they haven't signed on, they're not interested, what have you, just say, we're not here about HR1 and S1. We're here about House Joint Resolution 1. And that way you take that right off the table and they, and it made it harder for them to deflect over to, you know, to that, to that um, point of contention. So does anybody have a, um, anybody have a, a challenge that they want to um, share that may, they may not have put on the, uh, and didn't get a chance to fill out the survey and, and want to share? Anybody? I guess one of the things that at having talked to Laura, I think that there were successes in other states in meeting with Republicans. I guess the, the challenge for us, we have four Republicans. We submitted a request to one of them a couple times. They're very, very conservative Republicans in Virginia. So we sort of gave up because it was like we had eight meetings and we felt overwhelmed. But I think that the, the story doesn't stop here. And I think we're gonna continue, you know, we're just going to keep uh, finding constituents and asking for these meetings afterwards. But Great. we need to learn, we need to learn from Laura and other people the messaging. And I think the woman who was talking about the it was Barrasso from Wyoming who crossed his hands and said, "No, you're talking about HR one," and it, it, it was it was uh, very frustrating. Yeah. But, yeah so, so as I mentioned, five of the ten responses in terms of successes were cordial meetings with staffers for from Republicans. So people did have success. We um, in New Jersey, we um, have two Republicans and Ben Drew was supposed to actually be at our meeting yesterday. He was not, he got called away to a vote, but his staffer was very attentive. And I, we thought, you know, I think the meeting went fairly well. And we have now met with, we have 12 in our congressional delegation and the two senators, of course, and we've met with all, with both senators and nine of our 12 in our congressional delegation. So we actually, um, in our little, you know, little talk last night, we're sort of saying, well, now let's, over the next, you know, number of weeks, let's try to go for a clean sweep. Let's try to go for, you know, I think we definitely, the other two Democratic Congress people, we can um, probably have links to constituents the challenge for us will be the other Republican um, congressman because, he, you know, the the rep is he doesn't meet with anybody. So we'll have to find a constituent and see if we can actually get a meeting with his staffer too. So, I, I heard, I've heard that from a couple different people. Like, wow, we just kept kept after it and persisted, and eventually, we finally got a meeting. So, um, so if there aren't any other. Um, comments, let me just go through. There's there are a few steps, new net, few next steps in case you haven't done them already, you probably already have. But um, best practice is for a thank you email to go to the staffer when within 24 to 48 hours of the meeting, certainly sending them any materials you promised to them if they asked you for, for backup of any materials. I, I mentioned our common purpose report on several different occasions and had and offered to send it along and, and was taken up on that offer by every staffer that I offered it to. Um, sometimes the University of Maryland polling data from 2018 they wanted to see, but make sure you send that off right off the bat and spell out what it was that you decided that you're, um, that you're you know, whatever you asked for and what your follow up, follow up was going to be. Say they said, okay, we'll check back with me the last week of May because then I'll have a chance to check in with my, with my um, other people in the office about an op-ed or I'll get a have a chance to speak to the congressperson about the draft amendment language or whatever it is. Spell it out in the email and say, this is when I'll be circling back to you, you know, by email or by call, whatever they told you to do. Make sure you submit your report on your meeting notes to American Promise with the link at the bottom of the, the meeting notes um, just, just as soon as possible. And there's a link in there. If you took a photo Zoom, um, a Zoom photo shot of your meeting, send those. 
um, Sam shared with us a really cool little video that results put together with all of their um, Zoom meetings with their lobby, you know, their lobby days. So, you know, maybe uh, Gregory and Zai will come up with something fantastic like that for us. It were really, really, really interesting. And use them, you know, post them on social media and try to make opportunity, you know, use the opportunity to make news, put out a press release. I'm working on one for, for our New Jersey meetings. Um, put out a letter to the, the letter to the editor recording of the last meeting goes over how to do a press release and gives you sort of a, a template for it. And um, try to put out a letter to the editor, you know, thanking for the meetings you had and, and a way to possibly influence a little bit is to say, even for a member that's maybe not co-sponsoring yet, or you're, you're offering amendment language to, you know, Congressperson X, is a leader on this. And we would like to see Congressperson X be a leader on this amendment resolution work to, to, you know, to fix big money in politics or something of that nature, something applauding them for their work on something else and inviting them to uh, become involved. And, and then once it gets published, send it to the staffer and say, we, you know, we really, we would like to, we really want to work with you and we're getting the word out. So Vicki, I think- Well, and I would uh, just, uh, just mention one more thing with your Zoom, your screenshot, um, make sure you send that to the staffer that you met with when you're thanking them because mm -hmm. they do newsletters and they've got the social media too. So that's a, you know, that's a good, uh, a good way to keep American Promise name out there. So, um, so okay, so we are, uh, one of the things that uh, the people followed up with on the survey is that um, they're wondering about a town, town hall. Uh, that was a request and ask they'd made uh, with the, the staffer. Uh, can we do a town hall uh, with the congressperson uh, to address money in politics? And actually um, town hall is, is usually something that the, um, People show up to ask all, all kinds of questions about all kinds of issues. So um, you might want to look for a panel discussion. A panel discussion would allow you to control the, um, the, the message a little better. Oh, I'm so sorry. A train is coming through. You want to continue for Marie? <laughs> sure, sure. So um, a town hall gives you the opportunity to control the, control the topic and control the message. And um, in that situation, you uh, want to be either prepared ahead of time or thinking of immediately what um, what other experts you could tap into in your network to possibly uh, be involved in doing a town hall, maybe one or two other people besides the congressperson or the um, communicate, excuse me, the uh, community liaison in the con congressional office would probably be a good person. The congressperson's community liaison would probably be a good person to say, you know, do you have contacts in the in the district or in the state on this topic, and um, maybe be able to tap into their network of um, being able to bring somebody onto a, a a panel discussion rather than you know than a town hall. Is your train by, Vicky? It's gone. It just finished. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and the nice thing, so a panel discussion, you'd need, you know, of course, the member of Congress, and you need somebody, um, another person to kind of bounce off of them, and then a moderator um, is always good to have. And uh, so I have personally have a, a political science professor who's the head of his department, who's my go-to guy, um, and he's con the Constitution is his specialty, so he can fill in a lot of different roles. So it's nice to cultivate a relationship with somebody like that. Um, and then the, um, like, uh, like uh, um, Marie said, the community liaison in the district is, is one that would be um, helpful in setting that up. Already their in-district meetings are, are filling up for the August recess, recess. So, but we're not on a timeline. You know, you can, you can try and make plans for, for next year even, or, or the end of this year. Um, but you don't want to um, get involved with the campaign arm. So try and steer clear of that because we're not endorsing and uh, we're not participating in any kind of campaigning. Um, so, so that's, does anybody have any questions about, about having a, a, a panel discussion or an event of some sort with their member of Congress? 
Um, I have a question, Vicki, and I asked this in our leaders call, and I know Anne had come, you showed us her nice press release. So you're working on a press release too, and I thought, okay, but then I, I had asked the question, what do you do with the press release? Um, uh, I know a couple of journalists, I don't know what they would do with it, but I was thinking at least, you know, if I a good press release and send it out to the people in the different districts that ordered the organized the meetings that maybe they could pull something together on a on a letter to the editor but maybe it's just better if I ghost write letters to the editor and send it to these people and saying you want to put it in your local newspaper I don't know the best way of doing that well that's good too but uh, now correct me if I'm wrong Sam but a press release doesn't necessarily have to go to members of the press I mean could that go to would that be something you could send to um other legislators, um, you know, your uh, everybody in your state legislature to show, tell them we're working on this with your member of Congress, or uh, what do you call that a news a news release? What's your take on that, Sam? Well, here's the thing. I think the bottom line is it would be great if a paper picks it up, and honestly, it would be more likely a weekly paper that cares about what local people doing with a local member of Congress. Uh, the Washington Post or the Star Tribune in Minneapolis won't care much about one congressional meeting, but the little weekly papers might have a better shot. So Nancy, uh, I'll just say this and stop. The folks you had around the state who were helping set up, they were constituents. One of your options is to uh, uh, write the press release for that particular member of Congress and see if they would put it in their weekly paper or, as you said, kind of ghostwrite, if they're newbies, a letter to the editor about that congressional meeting in a positive light uh, and invite them to edit it and submit it to their local paper wherever they are. Just that local thing is, the, I think, the important thing. And in New Jersey, we discovered, I discovered a couple of years ago, there's a, a digital um, media outlet, it's called Insider New Jersey. And basically it's, sort of, it, they put out a newsletter and they have a daily, there's nothing in print, but it's daily. It's really, you know, a, a, a whole panoply of all kinds of political things going on in New Jersey in the state house. They'll mention what's happening in the congressional delegation and so on. And they have a section where all they do is they put in press releases. So it's certainly, you know, our press release is definitely going to go there. Um, I, I have to say in 2019, I don't think we tried to put it out a press release. 2018, we did, and we circulated it around to a few different places, and it was never picked up. But I think that now, you know, we've had our eyes open a little bit more for some of the weekly papers and also for this particular political digital site that it, it will definitely get picked up. And I know some of the grassroots organizations that have sort of gained ground in the last couple of years have used it very successfully to get press releases out there. Good. Good. And, uh, additional uh, feedback from the survey was people were worried that how could they can confirm that the staff spoke to the member of Congress or, um, you know, or other offices, you know, the, the DC office, if you saw them in district. And, um, and we were talking about that earlier. And I think probably the, the best, uh, the best thing is to, to make an, a, a follow up appointment with them. Um, especially with the member of Congress, hopefully that was your ask, if you weren't able to meet with the member of Congress, only a staffer uh, for, for your, your, one of your asks is that you meet in person with the member of Congress. It's a pretty heavy subject. And, uh, you know, you want to hear what kind of questions they have. Um, and you can also, when you follow up, you know, follow up on that and ask them, um, offer to set up an appointment with the member of Congress and uh, our legal counsel, Brian Boyle, who drafted the, uh, the amendment draft and so that he can answer any kind of questions that they might have that you're not able to answer. I so think that's, particularly that's uh, with Jim, Jim Rubens is very available to participate in the meetings with the uh, Republican um, members of Congress, because he, you know, he discusses it from a Republican standpoint. He was on both of the, he was on the, the two um, Republican members of Congress that we did meet with, one from Pennsylvania that we reached across the river to get a first meeting with, and um, and Andrew in here in New Jersey. 
Um, he was, Jim Rubens was on both. He was very helpful to the conversation. And he's, so he's available too. That's great. So um, how many of you asked them to co-sponsor HJR1? HJR Vicki, before um, you move on, can I just go back to sure. that? Um, because Sam, I, I've been um, attending a lot of Sam's uh, uh, different trainings on moving. I would say on. sneaking in, but go ahead. Excuse me? Sneaking in on a lot sneaking of Sneaking in, I've been invited to every single one. <laughs> soaking up the knowledge, but um, about moving, moving our Congress people up the, um, the, uh, the scale for, from, you know, opposed to neutral, to supporter, to advocate, to, um, you know, so on and so forth, up the scale. So one of the things that he talks about many, many times is putting in, not, a, not just a letter to the editor saying thank you for the meeting, but what I had mentioned before about a letter to the editor that specifically mentions the congressperson and pra praises them, it doesn't have to be effusive, but praises them about something that they're working on, that you appreciate, that they're leading on and saying, I would like, you know, I would appreciate seeing um, Congressman X, Congresswoman Y working on the amendment resolution initiative and being a leader on that issue as well. Something of that nature, um, that that's a good way. And then once it gets published to send it to the staffer. And then when you send it to the staffer, then follow up with the staffer a few days later. Did you see my email that we, we sent that letter to the editor? And by the way, you know, we really are waiting to hear back the feedback on the language, the draft amendment language that we sent to you or we really are waiting to hear about whether the congressperson has decided to co-sponsor or whether we're going to get that panel discussion, whatever it is, um, follow up. Put a little, you know, you put a little um, grease on the, the wheels and, and then you follow up. Well, and also too, because um, you had a lot of people at the end, Nancy, you know, all stepping in and, and lobbying many of them for the first time. And we had that situation in, in Minnesota too. Um, and we were talking earlier about that is it, to set each set a liaison up for each of the offices you met with. Uh, so have somebody in the group, one of the members, one of their constituents to take that responsibility and be, be the liaison. And they be the ones that follow up and, and cultivate the relationship with them. Uh, so that they, you've got somebody in there and then they may move through different staffers because of different things they ask, but then you've got somebody who really gets to know a congressperson's office and staff and, uh, and they'll be ready to, to take the lead on it next time, uh, next lobby day for sure for you. So uh, that's a good, good way to go to, to keep it moving. So any other questions on, on that area about the, um, trying to follow up with your congressperson. Okay. <laughs> so um, so you're, the Democrats that you met with, you asked them to co-sponsor HJR1. And if, so their name wasn't on it already if you've asked them to do that. And uh, we were talking on our leader call and, and basically a lot of times it takes a while for the names to get put on there. So don't, you know, freak out or think that they didn't do what they said they would do. Um, sometimes all of a sudden you'll end up with, you know, 10 names at a time going on. Uh, so, so just want to um, make sure that, um, that you do follow up if it's been a while or you see other names going on and not theirs. But if, and talking about a letter to the editor, one of the things you could say in your letter is that you ask that, that congressperson to co-sponsor co and, uh, and invite other constituents to uh, to do the same so they can hear from more people. Um, and then once their name is listed as a co-sponsor, you wanna send that thank you note and thank them publicly with another letter to the editor so that you can help educate people that yes, they support it. And uh, this is the thing uh, uh, so you can keep American promise and the effort in the, in the limelight. So has, has anybody so far written um, and submitted or just written a letter to the editor um, uh, uh, after this meeting? The, as follow up yet? You want to share anybody? <laughs> I, I did. I wanted, I said, um, I did. I um, 
picked out an article that was about um, a link of um, big money to private prisons being used for detention centers in North Jersey. And I um, transitioned it and I said this, the, the article really was about the, uh, the profit motive behind private prisons uh, being used for detention centers, but um, for the counties that, that contract with them. But I transitioned it and said, it's also about the, uh, the private prisons, big money donations to be able to get these contracts. And um, that's really something that's very important for us to address as well. And our constitutional amendment would do that. And I sort of tied in that uh, representative uh, Sierras and Bonnie Watson Coleman have already co-sponsored the resolution. And then I said, representative, do, 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 how about you? Oh, that's good. Now, unfortunately, it didn't get published because I didn't catch. I was like four days after the, but I, but I submitted yeah. it. So, yeah, and I will yeah. definitely use that tactic again. So, and that, and you know, they read even the small papers. You know, the rural papers, the the little guys. They read those weeklies. They people they are staffed to look for their names, so they're going to know if they're in the paper. So that's a good way to do it. So yeah, another hook that I saw today was the open secret article about all the pharmaceutical money going in, in terms of you know the bill in the house, in terms yeah. of um, negotiating pharmaceutical prices. So that's a nice hook. You know, I, I'm never quite sure in Virginia. You know, it's like Sam says, you don't, you're not going to get it in the Washington Post, and Washington Post is pretty big in Virginia. So it's the question of where then do you put it in the Richmond Times? I mean, how do you select? I suppose it's like you say, if we met with one Bobby Scott or uh, Abigail Spanberger is to put it in ghostwrite it and for local newspapers and saying, this is the hook and we're really hoping, we had this wonderful meeting and we're hoping to, you know, to have um, her co-sponsor this bill that will aim to get money out of politics. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I think that, I mean, my local newspaper is not exist, doesn't exist anymore. But th there are still some out there. They're all owned by the same company <laughs> in Minnesota, but there's still some weeklies out there. So uh, that's a good spot to put them in. And I think maybe we should broaden our horizons a little bit and, and post it, make sure we, we hit the online newspapers that are you know, in our areas um, or blogs or newsletters. A lot of stuff is with, after the 2016 election, a lot of people have gotten creative about how they get information out there. Mm -hmm. So what's your so, view? Um, so can I ask a question about Republicans? So there's four Republicans who we didn't get managed to get meetings with. You don't want to antagonize them, but you want to pique their interest in, in sort of saying, we really hope that uh, that they 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 recognize that this is, a, is it worth highlighting that they, they haven't taken action? I don't know. I mean. Not if you're trying to get a meeting with them, you want to be positive. You want to send something, yeah. put something positive. And how about the hook of, you know, now on open secrets, you can go into the congressional races and you can, when you do the drop down, you can find out how much outside spending was in each of the each of the races in support of the candidate and opposed to the candidate. And I, I think a perfect way to do it is to say, you know, representative so and so had X amount of money spent against them and outside spending, and that's really concerning. We are trying to meet with representative so and so's office because we're concerned about this money, um, you know, influencing elections. And um, we think that representative so-and-so could be a leader on this, Some, you know, something of that nature, but hook, if you can hook in something they're interested in, that's even better. Well, that was one of our questions. We met with a Republican um, Congresswoman, who this is her first election. And 76% um, of the money um, spent in her campaign was outside spending. Um, some for her, some against her. And so our question was, um, as the, from the constituent, we, you know, I heard a lot of messaging out there, but, but I didn't hear any of your words. You know, how, how, yeah. how does she, you know, and we didn't have her as a staffer, but how does she feel about her message being unable to, 
to be heard by by her constituents. Um, and, uh, you know, we as a voter, I feel like my voice isn't heard. How does she feel about her voice not being heard? Uh, so yeah, that's, you know, that's really good information, Marie, good to bring that up that that's available. And, you know, that's their message there. It's, what is she for and what is she against? All and actually, what and Open Secrets said. actually has it divided into in-district versus out-of-district sources yep. of donations. So yep. if the if the data doesn't actually, like we were going to try to use that with Andrew, it actually didn't help because he got more out-of-district money than his opponent did. So that really didn't kind of boost up our, our, our you know, our arguments. We didn't use it, but um, it could if you want, if you look at it. Oh, and that's one thing when I met with a Republican uh, Congressman, Eric Paulson, several, several elections ago. And he said, well, you know, I asked him, how do you feel about outside spending? He said, well, sometimes it works for you. Sometimes it works against you. You know, that's just the way it is. Well, it's, it's different now than it was four years ago. <laughs> and uh, there is a lot of money coming from out of state that's trying to, to influence our, elect our elections and their messaging is not reflective of the candidates. So uh, they're they're at a big disadvantage. Their voices are not being heard. So maybe we could turn it around and hit them that way. Mm. So, um, okay. So Good how question. many people offered to collaborate on a letter to the editor or op-ed with their um, member of Congress in their meetings? Anybody? I found, that, I, I found the typical ask is that you have to ask the, the communications department. So I would say, would be, your office be willing to, to collaborate with us? And they said, well, you'd have to talk to the communications department. So it was sort and of- And then in the follow-up, I asked for the contact for the communications oh, person. Thank you. So, you know, so you can keep it going. Um, and, and so if you don't have that, I, it's not too late to ask for it. Um, so the, yeah, it's, it's, um, be strategic in the paper that you want to submit an article in. That's a good thing. I mean, if, if you're, I'm, we're working with senators that both support this. Minnesota is a purple state, right? So I want them, I can't post something in the Red Wing paper or the, you know, the paper by Fargo, uh, but they can. So that's an opportunity to get their message out there as well as ours. Um, and then also to ask them if you want to collaborate, what is an issue that you're working on that you want more people to know about that's affected by money and politics? Then you can do the research and it's always better to send them a draft or even ghost it, you know, so that they're ahead of the game with it. And that helps you kind of control what kind of messaging is in there. Uh, so, um, so that's, it's, um, yep. yeah, I mean, we did. has it, Go ahead. We um, are asked to send it to Cory Booker's office was about collaborating on an op-ed and ahead of time, um, we, we had, the, we had the, the bonus of having um, Dave Palmer, who actually is um, lead counsel for Center for Popular Democracy. He's a constituent in Gottheimer's district. I guess new because this is the first time I had met him through, you know, getting involved with uh, him getting involved with lobby days this time. So initially he was coming on as a constituent, but then he got the approval of Center for Popular Democracy to actually have his Center for Popular Democracy hat on in our democratic meetings that he was going to. And in Senator Cory Booker's um, meeting, we had thought about giving him the hook of a collaborative op-ed that had to do with private prison um, donations um, or the effects of money on in politics on social justice, criminal justice reform. And um, between Dave and I, we were thinking about who we could ask to possibly be a collaborator, you know, with Senator, we accept we're going to ghostwrite it with the collaborator, right? And um, I actually thought of Marianne Howland, who is a Business for American Promise um, signer and who was interviewed by, I'm not sure who does the interviews for the uh, Empowerment Weekly and for the Focus articles on American Pro Promises website. But July of 2020, if you look up, she was the, um, she was the focus and she's a, on the board of the American Sustainable Business Council and she has her own communications uh, firm and she had some really powerful things to, to say about gender and diversity and the effect of money and politics on, on these issues. So I immediately thought of her and I was able to get, um, I have never met her, um, 
but I was able to talk to Elizabeth Jody and actually Jeff at the networking event on Monday night, uh, excuse me, on Thursday night and ask, you know, do you think she'd be interested? And I'm like, oh yeah, she'd probably be very interested. So I emailed her, she emailed me back. Yes, she was interested and I'm speaking to her tomorrow. We're gonna come up with what, you know, how we're gonna set up the op-ed and um, I have the communications director's information from Booker's office. So we'll ghost it and probably send it over. And uh, hopefully we'll be, you know, hopefully we'll be talking about the op-ed that we got in. Got in. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Everybody else is so quiet. Anybody have anything they want to share about the lobby day experience? Barb and Steve? Well, I will just tell a funny story that involves Barb and Steve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they're not in my group. They they live, they're in Marie's group. So they live in South Jersey and I live in Northwest Jersey. And we were meeting with Tom Milanowski's staff, his, a staffer named John Marshall. And they said, oh, our son went to school with a John Marshall. And it turned out it was the same John Marshall. It so was John Marshall. It was old, it was old home week <laughs> on the call, which made it, you know, a little more entertaining. That was and he nice. was very oh, receptive. Well. Yes, he was. He knew we were new grandparents even. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were they were comparing how many children were in the in the families now. Yeah. But that's networking. <laughs> yes. There you go. It's, you have the power of networking. Gener through the generations. Yeah. Well, it helps to have friends, yes. <laughs> so that was uh that 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 started off the meeting. I mean, it was it's already a friendly audience anyway, but it certainly started the meeting off on an even friendlier. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yes, it did. So that was entertaining, at least. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Gary? Um, I don't really have anything to share. I just actually joined American Promise about no more than two months ago. I'm just trying to get up to speed and everything. And uh, part of doing that is attending meetings so I can figure out what I need to do and where my place is in this. Great. Did you, did you have an opportunity to participate in a lobby day meeting? I did not. I was uh, busy on that time, but yeah. And what state are you in? I am in Washington state. I am uh, currently trying to uh, get involved with some other community activists in my state, but I've, I've uh, found out that there's actually not a chapter in the state, so I'm working on getting that dealt with. Good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah it's, um, what, what part of Washington are you in? Uh, Western Washington, just a bit north of okay. Seattle. Okay, because there is somebody in Seattle that was at the conference a couple of years ago. Um, well, the last conference, which was a couple of years ago. Um, gosh, I can't remember his name. Did, nobody put you in touch? Yeah, anybody um, put you in touch with anybody there? That's what I'm trying to do right now is get in touch with other activists. Do you know if that person is still active in American Promise? Um, gosh, I haven't heard from him Marnie, for a while. Is that I, something, Marnie, can you search that? In your okay, in the database? I'm pretty sure Gary, Dr. Jessica sent you an email. Yeah, yes, I've been in touch with her and she, okay. she recommended I start coming to these sort of meetings. Yep. Yep. Good. So I'm yeah. here. Okay. Right. Well, good. Good. I'll try to reach out. Remember the, the and reach out to us, Gary, remember. if you have questions yeah. about maybe how to contact some other groups to, to get some people involved and so we can kind of give you some ideas of how to how to tease some people out of the woodwork um, to get involved? Yeah, they scooped yeah. us up out of uh, indivisible. Yeah, then yeah, yeah, we were at an indivisible we meeting. We were at a picnic. They yeah, and picnic. Uh, yeah, um, I think it was Joan and Marie were handing out leaflets. So uh, that's how that's how I got all of my membership. Is I yep. gave a presentation yep. at an indivisible meeting, and and all of my members are also members of indivisible. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. But, but there must be. Um, Cindy, Cindy, um, what's her that? Cindy Black, she's she's from Washington, isn't she? Sam saying yes. Yes, Sam's saying. my friend. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We we could we could hook she you up. She leads a statewide nonprofit, or did? Yeah, and because Hendrick Smith did this wonderful video on mm -hmm. on on Washington State, and there were two people who were very instrumental in advocating for the constitutional amendment. Um, Gary, if you go, I mean, if you put your email in the chat, and we'll send you the link to the these videos. You'll be bombarded. 
<laughs> but represent us is another group that um, they don't advocate specifically for the amendment anymore, but they're they're very like minded people. So that's another mm -hmm. good group. Great. Thank yeah, you. Uh, and one of my members is is a member of represent us. And I, I joined represent us to support him and he joined American promise to support mm -hmm. me, Very but cool. they don't specifically do it, but we partner with them. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good group. All right. Yeah. Th thanks. Just great. Okay. Yeah. Mainly I've just been looking to find ways to reach out to other people. So if you got any contact information, that would be very much appreciated. Okay. Awesome. All right. We'll put something together for you. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll reach out to, um, to Steve from represent us and see if, he, if they know of a contact in Washington state. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. And, and Patricia. Hello, I'm, I'm in Dallas, Texas. So it says something already. <laughs> yeah, great. Are you with Ann? Yes, with Ann Drum, yeah. yes. Great. Awesome. Thanks for coming to the meeting. Any positives or negatives that you want to share from your meetings? I wasn't able to um, attend the meetings because it was during the time where I was volunteering um, with refugees. So I was out mm -hmm. on the, but we went to, I went to the planning sessions. They're always helpful. And yeah. I have lobbied before for other things. In fact, the last time I was um, with a staffer from Senator Cruz's Washington DC one um, <laughs> and right, he left the mic on by mistake right afterwards and said something about the liberals. <laughs> Had to put up oh. with those liberals for a few minutes. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Oh, well, that's his job. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, 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 thanks okay. for coming tonight. So we yeah. have a lot of um, different meetings too that if, if um, now I've forgotten the name of Gary, is it? If yeah. Gary ever mm -hmm. wanted to um, sit in mm -hmm. on Ann's meetings, there's been people from different states that sometimes do that. Yep. Yeah, they're on the AP calendar and, and we'll have um, actually very shortly, I think within the next two to three weeks after um, after we get it approved by Marnie and Dr. Jessica, we'll be doing a sort of an intro to American Promise uh, meeting that'll be set up virtually on the calendar like twice a month. So if you have somebody who is like, well, I'm not so sure, like then you can say, well, sign on to this. You get to, you know, see what it's about and what the options are and, um, you know, kind of get them involved a little bit. But we just, I think we wanted to just sort of go around the room and say, you know, do you have a takeaway lesson that you feel like you learned from the experience this time? You'll say, you know, next time we do, next time you either, you know, are doing lobby days or doing a meeting with an elected, I'm gonna keep this in mind. This is a little takeaway that I have that how I'm gonna do it better next time. Anybody? I think I should have started earlier and I was waiting for American Promise to get the people from the, you know, who was, who was registered for the com conference. And normally I think the, you know, in results, what we do is start planning a month ahead. And I think that that's what I should have done, especially with engaging with, we have a couple constituents in Republican areas. We needed to start it a, a lot earlier. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I expected, anticipated, a lot of people to sign up for lobby day from Minnesota and the, the handful that did were already our members. So I had to really scramble to, to get people to, to attend some of the districts. I just didn't have very many people in um, and it worked out pretty well. Um, but, but I wish I would have started sooner <laughs> and not waited for that. So I'm, I'm going to give the reverse. I, I really didn't expect, I mean, I, I thought, I thought I might get a few new people from the signups from American Promise for the conference, but I really expected to need to, um, you know, get, engage our own. We've been lucky enough for New Jersey to have 15 attendees at the last two National Citizen Leadership Conference because we're fairly close. You know, people can get there, and people have been pretty devoted. But I knew that not everybody was going to be able to to get on the conference, um, you know, on the lobby meetings and so on because it was going to be during the day and they were still going to have work and so on. So I sort of even back to just February, um, put in my signups for some of the virtual meetings that I did, I said, we're going to be having um, a National Citizen Leadership Conference and we're gonna have opportunities to lobby. So please sign up if you're interested and tell me what district you're in. And I did, I was able to tease out some people from there, constituents and districts that we had not lobbied before for Congress people. And then, um, 
then I did a specific in the end of March, I did a specific um, presentation on like sort of a, a takeaway from all the, all the spending and all the lobbying money that went into 2020. And I did the same thing there. And so we had, I, I went through, we had 26 different participants in our 12 um, lobby day meetings in various combinations from two to, I think our biggest was I think 12 and 13 of them were brand new. Right. Um, never had lobbied before and maybe had attended one event that we had had before. And, um, and just about, I'd say 70% of the new people, we got to do some speaking role and got them to practice. Uh, I always have people, if they're new, I have them write out what they're going to say, time it, practice it, send it to me so I can make, you know, make some adjustments if, if I, you know, if, just to make sure that they are comfortable with what they're doing. And um, I, I have to say, and we did practices. We, we sometimes did three practices in one session <laughs> with the, the combinations of like, these people are gonna be in these three meetings. So let's, let's kind of switch around our roles. We had, I had a chart of who's doing which, who's doing which position in each meeting and what are our asks gonna be. And we, you know, we practiced through and I, and I kind of feel like it did go fairly seamlessly, except for when I got confused in two back to back meetings of who was doing thank you in the asks, <laughs> but I got corrected and the right person said what they needed to say. So it's all right. We ad lib well, don't worry. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> right. It and worked that out. Too. If I were to add anything, I would say get involved in a speaking part in the meeting because nothing brings it home better than being an active speaker in the meeting. Take a part, be a moderator. I was for the first time this round and it's uh you know it was a lot of fun it was a lot of effort but it made the meeting seem and all of the other meetings seem more uh more tangible for lack of a better term but take an active part in the meetings whatever it is and be involved with it, at least one meeting if not more meetings and when you start to get involved at that level you'll start to appreciate the whole process a lot more and it'll be a lot more real to you. The reality of it will really hit home. And that's important. I think it's important for your own um, uh, excitement in terms of trying to bring this forward. And I think it shows when you talk to somebody uh, in the meeting. And that's we have a lot of happens. Yeah, we have a lot of positive responses. There's a lot more act, active listening uh, on all of the people that we met with parts you know in the past they were kind of like, yeah this is a good thing but now it's kind of like yeah we really got to get into this because you know this there's far too much money and it's you know it's getting far too swampy out there with all this going on we're really going to have to get active and uh it's it's like i said it's starting to show the other thing that was helpful is one of uh our meetings ran a half it, it went it started a half an hour late and one of my members who was supposed to have a speaking role had signed up to do ref lacrosse and he thought he had time. He was even calling from his car to make sure, but because it started so late, I thank God he had written out his script because then I just read his part. So it's when you say prepare for the meeting, yeah. it is no joke, prepare for the meeting. Okay. Nothing beats practice. You're it's muted, Vicky. Yep, and that's what we did. We wrote out scripts for every single one. And um, because of Zoom, you know, sometimes people couldn't get on right away. Uh, one time we had to switch to Skype, which was weird. Mm. I didn't make that one, <laughs> couldn't figure it out. Uh, but my part was read by somebody else. So that having the script written out, everybody contributed to it, their own words but they all had a copy of it. So it really made it go seamlessly. We didn't have to worry about missing anything. So uh, I, I think that was really, really helpful for us uh, uh, for, and for my um, OCD <laughs> mentality. <laughs> <laughs> so, well there, I think we, we covered it. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Thank Marnie, you. do you want to do you want to introduce the information? About the, the, I did put the link in the um, the chat. Oh, the, the form. Service. Yeah, the form. Yeah, and yep. maybe people can grab it and and after the call fill it out. But go oh, go ahead. Okay, so if you all click the chat, you'll see the 
a form and it says I want to take action on amending the constitution to get big money out of politics by joining an American promise action team. Um, and the action team, like kind of what I was talking about before is just, it's led by a volunteer like Marie and Vicky and Nancy, for example, and we will just be training on different things. So for example, we have the organizing events team and that's the first Tuesday of the month where that team call will occur. And then the using social media to forward the 28th amendment um, that's the first Thursday of the month. And then the getting elected official team, which was today, that will be the second Thursday of the month. And then our friend banking team, which is led by Vicki Barnes, and that will be the third Thursday of the month. And then writing letters to the editor that actually get published team is the fourth Thursday. So if you'd like, you can do more than one team if you are super motivated and ready to get this amendment passed and reach new people. Um, and then to fill it out, you obviously, there's a date and your first and last name, your state, zip code, your phone number, how you identify as a voter, which those are optional, your race and ethnicity, that's optional. And if you're a member of the American Promise chapter, you can click that box um and then after that you'll just submit a submit and i will get the responses and if you have questions you can reach out to myself you can reach out to vicky sam marie um nancy if you have additional questions and if i could just add go ahead i'll put my email in the um in the chat and we're inviting people to check one of the boxes to attend a t one of those teams for the next four months. Oh, it could be two, but two teams, but um, for the next four months. And you might grab that link because if we close down the Zoom, then you'll still have it to fill it out if that's something you wanna do. You can also, you're probably all aware of this, everybody's been Zooming, but if you click uh, at the bottom of the chat box, it says file and then there's another little mm connection next to it with the three dots, the ellipsis. And, and if you open that, it says save chat. And you, if you click on that, it'll download all the information in the chat. So you'll get all the links and everything in, in one document. And Gary, um, I'd like to invite you to the friend banking meeting on, on uh, Thursday, the 24th. Yeah. Um, uh, no, is that right? Work? 20, the, the, the third 20th. Thursday, what's that? The 20th on the 20th. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's about um, making calls or sending texts to people about American Promise and it might help you to, to build your, your movement there. All right, cool. So and I'll put the link for you, Gary, right in the chat right now. So, you so can the, the sign up thing? Yep. All right. For the upcoming call, it's right the last one I just put. So if you want to register for that, you're welcome. All right, well, yeah, I'll do that then. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about thank the train. You. It's okay. Have a great <laughs> evening, everyone. Thanks. You too. Thank Thanks you. you too. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.